So Mark, we've done a lot of audits on some older homes and one of the key things that we see is a problem in these older homes is we mm. get cold internal walls mm. and there's a lot of them as well. So what do you think about these details in these well, older homes? We've had a little bit of a think about this and it's a, it's a noticeable fact with all the testing that you've done on yeah. older homes. We're on stumps, bearers and joists typically at that age of home we're well off the ground so you've got a cold subfloor at that stage of the game in construction back in the 60s and 70s and it wasn't until about the 19 mid 80s that they brought in a panel flooring system mm -hmm. so what you have in this age of home stumps bearers and joists the timber frame going down the roof frame going on, the roof tiles going on, and then they come back inside and they'll actually sheet the floor individually to every room. So the sheet flooring is not continuous. It's stopping and starting either side of every wall. So what we have is we have an air leak. We no longer have an air barrier at floor level. We've got air infiltration up inside the internal walls. So what we're talking about here is an airtight seal at the bottom of the wall at the skirt, an airtight seal at the corners, yep. and then we've got air infiltration inside the building, which is going to avoid a blower door test. We're not going to see that leakage. You're not going to register it. We're going to get airflow moving constantly from the subfloor straight into the roof as you warm up this plaster surface. That's right. You're simply through stack effect. Mm. Warming up the house warms up the plasterboard. Yeah. The wall cavities are trying to be warmed. Yeah. So they're going to end up, if you're 10 degrees under the floor and you're 22 degrees in the house, the wall cavities might be 15, yeah. but they're 15 degrees, they're warmer than the subfloor. Yeah. You will get a rising warm current, you'll get stack effect, you'll draw the cold air in from the subfloor up through your internal walls. Yeah. And these walls nearly become like cooling fins. So when we do thermal imaging, we find that the internal walls are actually cold. Yeah. Temperature of the room might be 20, 22, but the walls might be 15 or 18 degrees. Absolutely. So all that heat energy is going into the internal walls yeah. in an attempt to warm them up to the same temperature as the air temperature of the house, call it 20, 22 degrees. Okay, let's go up and have a look at what that detail looks like in the roof. So we've moved up into the roof space now because we're going to talk about a solution to this air infiltration through the internal walls, making your house cold. Just to quickly review, you've got your stumps, bearers and joists of an older home, let's say. You've got the cold air from the subfloor infiltrating up through the internal walls. And what it's doing is just making the plasterboard on either side of that wall cold. The, the internal walls of this house in the winter time are acting like cooling fins. So you're pumping lots of heat into the home to try and warm it up, but very much a lot of that heat, heat is lost in the internal walls because you'll never get them to the temperature that is comfortable. We've peeled back the insulation that's in this roof, which is quite a well insulated roof, but you can see the top of the wall. So this is the wall of the passageway below. And what you can see either side of the top plate are these two and three millimeter, even to five millimeter gaps all the way along the top of this wall either side. So that's the sort of gaps that are allowing the cold air from the subfloor to infiltrate straight up through the walls into this roof space. Doing a couple of things, cold internal walls, it's also possibly bringing moisture up into the roof space because your subfloor, soil below, you might be in a damp location. So the last thing you want is moisture migrating into the roof space to create possibly even mold or building fatigue issues. So the solution that we've found for this situation is to use a gun grade expanding foam. So very easily applied as you can see, uh, a great little tool to have in your arsenal for making houses airtight and energy efficient. Ideally to be done in a retrofit scenario where you might be replacing your insulation. So if you are doing that, by all means, get up in the roof and seal off the top of your walls to create that air barrier at the ceiling level and stop that infiltration that is making all your internal walls colder through that air leakage.